whenever I see the queen come out so early, it's move three, the queen's coming out, I want to start thinking about, can I attack the queen? So I'm going to play the move knight to c3. It's a developing move, and it gives me the option to hop in to d5. I also could think about d3 or d4 with the idea of bishop g5, but I really do like just hopping my knight in, and I think that's going to force the queen to go back to d8. Otherwise, we have a fork. And so black's going to lose some time, and I essentially get my knight in the center for free. So that looks pretty good. And of course, I'm not worried about my bishop because I have a stronger threat on the queen. Okay, knight to d4. So there is a threat on f3. If I allow black to do this, what's going to happen? Well, I'll probably take. He'll probably take. I'll take. It's not terrible, but it does expose my king and kind of give me some bad pawn structure. If you imagine if this pawn captures, I would have an isolated pawn. I'd have some doubled pawns. Don't really love that. And so with that in mind, I think I will go ahead and trade just to avoid messing up my pawn structure. Now, black is the one who has the doubled pawns. I'd like to develop this guy, but there's not really a great option right now, right? I can't go here or here or the queen simply takes me. And I can't go here or the pawn takes me. So if I'm going to develop it, the only square is to d2. Now that's, it is a move. It's still developing. It's still getting it off the back rank. It's better than nothing, but it's not like an incredible square. So what I think I might do instead is I'm thinking about playing a move like queen h5 or queen g4. And it, notice how it defends the square. And it gives me the option to now develop my bishop to a more aggressive square on g5. And also if black were to castle, it would set up a little tactic where I could win the exchange. So now I'm kind of thinking through both of these moves and does one make more sense than the other? Um, also, maybe F4 is an idea, just kind of gaining control of these center squares like this, right? So a couple of moves are coming to my mind. I think the thing about queen g4 and queen h5 that I'm wondering is what's going to happen after the pawns start chasing my queen around. So for example, if I go here, if black plays h5, do I like that? Am I okay with that? Uh, what about if I go to h5 and black plays g6? What's going to happen? Am I okay with that? Um, that one actually, I see a nice move. Bishop g5 could be a follow-up. And if he takes, I take. Yeah, I think I actually do like that. So with that in mind, I think I will play queen to h5. And again, the point is I want to develop my piece, but I want to do it on a good square, right? And d2 is really passive. I'd like to play the more aggressive bishop g5. So I'm, I'm giving myself that option. I'll play bishop to d7, and what I'm going to do is castle, and then I'll have a discovered attack with my bishop. Sometimes it can be tricky for your opponents to see. So if you want to set a little trap, you can do it this way. Okay, they're going for the fork, so I'm going to castle, which defends that. This is also defended, so I'm not worried about that. And now we have that discovered uh, attack, or discovered check that I'm talking about. I can move this bishop wherever I want, and I will be putting the king in check. So it opens up moves that aren't normally available to you. For example, if I wanted to, I could go bishop to h3 because it's checked. Now, do I want to go there? Probably not, but it is an option. I can go here and take this pawn. Um, I think what I will do, though, is first just deal with this. So let me just play e5 here. Cut down the bishop and defend my, my c7 square. Keeping this move in the back pocket. There's a double check here, which is almost check made if the king goes here. But if the king goes here, I wouldn't be able to. So that's kind of why I'm, I'm waiting. Let's see what white's going to do. Okay, they took it. So I think the easiest thing here is just to take this. Um, again, I could go for this threat. And if they move here, it's checkmate. But if they move here, it's not. So I'll just capture this. And it's probably a good try, actually, because there's a good chance the white might actually go for there. Okay, let's go over here. Now the knight's actually trapped, because uh, if it goes back here, I do have this discover check that we mentioned. Yep. So here we go. You can see how this is coming uh, coming into play. Let's take that with the check, and white cannot recapture me. And remember what I said about rooks on the second rank. Look at all of those juicy targets for this guy. It's going to be very difficult for white to defend everything. They're trying to cut off my bishop from defending the rook. So what I had analyzed was that I was going to take here. Yes, I'm going to lose my bishop. 
but I do have this fork. And after king here, what I had analyzed previously was I was going to take the rook and then just start gobbling up some more pawns. Now that I'm looking at it, though, I can actually take here with this fork, which might be the better way to do it. So, yeah, here's an example of where the line that I had calculated turns out to not be the best. I think these are still good, right? This is what I was talking about. I was going to get, you know, at least maybe I'll take this one probably. I was going to get the rook. And I was going to get one, two, um, maybe even three pawns for my knight and bishop that I lost, which is, which is a decent trade since I'm already ahead. But on further investigation, this actually looks like a stronger move. And I will do that. I could even go back and then take this. So I got a free pawn. Or if I want, I could take this. Or we could do this, bring the rook over and actually just go for checkmate. That actually even looks better. And what I'm noticing here is the king doesn't have a lot of options, right? Look at how it's it's basically almost checkmated already. Maybe even this is the best move. Maybe this is the best move. Yep, I'm ch I keep changing because I keep seeing better moves. So here we go. The threat is checkmate. Threat is simply checkmate. King can't move. So all I have to do is put it in check. Yeah, so we have two checkmate threats. Yeah, okay. So I don't think white can stop both of those, can they? Maybe rook c2. Maybe rook c2. All right, they stop this one. But then we have, like I mentioned, this is another one as well. Okay. Okay, so they do play g6, which stops this threat. But whenever I see this move, I'm always starting to think about the dark squares that are now weaknesses. Okay, so bishop g5, bishop f4, maybe trying to come in here. All of these moves come to mind. I also do have that a4 idea, like I mentioned. But I think for right now, what I'll do is just play bishop to g5. Just trying to develop the pieces. And it, for example, if the knight like moves here, I'm bringing my bishop. Okay, so f6. The problem for black is that these pawns can never go backwards. And so weaknesses are being created every time they push a pawn. But even though I lost a move here by going here, that's okay. I'm just going to drop back probably to d2. Um, I can't go here. Obviously, I can go here, but then I'm going to get chased around again, most likely. But I think d2 is the square. A little bit annoying for my knight. So I am going to keep an eye on this and think through this. Maybe after a4, we, we hop the knight over to a3. I don't want my knight to be stuck here indefinitely. But black has created some weaknesses, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. If you look at the board, where's the only open file? It's the A file. And by doing this little trade, because I've sort of taken the rook out of the game by, by forcing it here, and the queen now is up here, it couldn't recapture, I can see this as an opportunity to get control of that A file. And that's a big deal, especially when there's only one pair of rooks on the, or one rook for each side. Whoever gets control of that open file, it's going to be very difficult for black to ever regain control. So it's kind of this like long term advantage that I have. And I can just constantly be on the lookout for invading with my rook and starting to attack stuff laterally. Okay. Um, I guess we could trade there. Actually seems like a decent option. I could trade here first and then take there. Um, which one is the best? Hmm. I'm thinking if I take here and the queen takes, then I could actually just take the knight. Because I'm getting low on time, I don't want to like overthink it. That seems pretty good. Generally speaking, when you have a pin like this, you know, as long as there's no risk for the pin going away, you don't have to just take it right away. You can just leave it. I think I will do that. Let's go ahead and take this one. Pin's not really going anywhere unless the king moves. Okay, the queen moves, and here we go. Now I can take the knight, because it's no longer defended. And guess what? The rook is still there. Like I said, it's not going anywhere. I can still take it next move. So I'm just getting as much as I can, right? Getting this piece for free first, and I'm still going to get the bishop for rook trade later. Maybe now is a good time to think about d5, but same problem as before. If I take with the queen... Do I really want my king to be opened up? Now, you might say that's dangerous, and it is. But since my opponent has castled here, I'm actually going to show you guys something that you can do um, if we see this. So if take, yeah, I'm going to allow this. And what I'm planning on doing is actually moving my king over. 
bringing my rook over and we can use that file to attack the king. Okay, we're not going to get a chance to see it, it looks like. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind. If that ever happens, it's not always necessarily a bad thing. You can do something like this and turn it into an attacking idea. Okay, now black takes. So I could, if I want, like I just mentioned, take this way, bring the king over. Or since my queen is here now, I could just simply take with the queen. They both look fine to me, actually. Um, I'll, sh I'll go ahead and take with the pawn just to illustrate this attacking idea. So we already have the bishop kind of lined up. Once we get the rook involved, uh, we have a heavy piece um, attacking. Now we do have to be careful because we do have some weaknesses here. Like this is a weak square. So you want to watch out for that. This is potentially a weak hole because no pawns can control it. And I've got it controlled with the bishop. So I think I'm okay. Yeah, I think I will go ahead now and start this maneuver of bringing the rook over. Okay, so let's go ahead, move the queen back to a safe square. And we're getting ready to go here next slide the rook over. All right, so now I'm going to start thinking about tactics that might open up here. Queen to h5. All right, so the wayward queen attack. The sort of standard approach to this is to play knight to c6 to defend. Bishop comes out, tries to checkmate you. You play g6, you play knight f6. What I think I'm going to do this game is play knight to f6. This is the, the kitty counter gambit. And essentially, you allow them to take the pawn with the intention of chasing that queen around later. Exactly. So we play bishop e7 to block. And notice, we already have two pieces out. We're about to get a third piece out, another tempo on the queen. So we're going to have a whole bunch of pieces out. And white is still undeveloped. Okay? So that's kind of the point. All right. I could take that. But then we have to worry about this. We do have bishop to f6. Where's the queen going to go? Here or here, maybe? Hmm. Interesting. I think probably what I'm going to do is just castle. Or, actually, now that I think about it, I have another idea. So a lot of times in these situations when your pawn is being attacked by a queen, you can allow them to take it with the idea of playing rook over. And you get even more tempo and more pieces into the game. Yeah, I think we're going to go with that one. Okay. Yeah, I was expecting that we would see that. But here's the Here's the plan. Rook comes over. Notice it's defended by the knight. Everything is kind of defended, and we gain another tempo on the queen. And basically, we just have a ton of pieces out, and white has, like, none. And so we just try to be aggressive and attack and make use of the fact that we have all those pieces out. Queen to f3. Wow. So what am I going to do? I'm probably just going to take and attack the queen. It's the super easy solution to pretty much, you know, 90% of these. Okay. That's a big mistake. So I already have the attack on the queen. If I could create another attack at the same time, like c6, guess what? Now white has a problem because they have two things that they need to save and they only have one move to do it. And so, yeah, white chooses to give up the bishop. I'll take it back and uh, I got a free piece. Okay, let's play, um, let's just play bishop d7 and give ourselves some options with the knight. So we're creating this discovered attack. Okay, they're going to they're going to go for this. I think what I'm going to do is move forward and look at this and look at this and look at this. I have a lot of threats already. White wants to. Yes, they can grab a pawn, but it's just a pawn. My rook's defended. I don't really care. And then I'm going to go here and fork these guys. Okay, so they do stop that. So my knight's under attack. I think What's, you know, what's a good way to defend it that also does something else that I would like to do anyway? E5. I want to move this pawn anyway. I want to get my bishop out anyway in castle. And so I'm going to defend my knight at the same time as doing that. Okay. I would like to take this and get a fork. But I can't because the queen is defended. So how could I add an attacker there but do it with tempo? Because I need to do it with tempo because I don't really have time to wait. So for example, if I play this... I'm adding an attacker there, but I don't have time to do that because white's going to take my knight and the threat is gone. But what I can do is play rook to c8, which attacks the queen. And when the queen moves, I've added my attacker and then bam, the knight can go in for the fork. That looks pretty powerful. Of course, this also looks pretty good. Just messing up white's pawn structure. But why just go for a trade and, and a pawn structure thing when you can get a, you know, a fork like this? Okay, so definitely thinking about bringing the knight in. I'm also thinking about like 
Do I want to move the bishop here first for some reason, just with the tempo on the queen? Does that make sense? Doesn't have a lot of squares. Actually, if you look carefully, you can't go there, you can't go there, you can't go here, you get forked. You can't go here, here because the rook, you can't go here because the knight, you can't go here because the bishop, you can't go here because the knight, you can't go. Doesn't have any squares except f1. Wow. And f1, yeah, I'm going to play it. Because forcing the queen back to f1 means after I go check, the king can't really run away and escape. So I think this is a better move. And you see the problem for white, right? Bringing out that queen so early, it's been nothing but a headache, essentially, for white. Just, oh, I have to move my queen again. Oh, black's attacking my queen again, right? So, yeah. Very rarely do you want to bring your queen out too early. Need want to go to? Wow. Uh, I was going to say is if I were to go there and force the king back, black's rooks would not be connected. So they wouldn't be helping each other. And the king is kind of like in the way of the rooks having maximum effectiveness. This move I definitely was not expecting. I mean, it makes sense. Black is trying to defend the bishop. And yes, at the end of the game, you want to activate your king. However, we are not exactly at the end of the game. There's a lot of pieces here. And what I'm thinking is that black's about to get checkmated because of this move. So the question is, how do we, how do we do that? So knight f5 still looks like a pretty good move. It's a check. Where's the king going to go? I only see one, two, three options. Um, no, this one's not even an option. The bishop's there. What am I saying? So only two options. This one doesn't look good. That would be checkmate with a pawn. Okay, so we can eliminate that. So if I go check, the king has to go here. And then the bishop come. It's over. It's over for black. So, you know, active king at the end of the game is good. But make sure you don't do it too early. This is not the end of the game. And rooks are still powerful pieces and bishops and knights, right? So I just saw it. It's over. It's checkmate. Black is losing. There's nothing they can do. Okay, and so there you go. This is what I mentioned. Bishop is slicing across. This is controlled. This is controlled. This is controlled. And there you go. Pawn finishes off the game. And if a rook comes over, I'm probably just going to move my king so that this guy can help out. And you could say, why don't you just castle? Well, I guess I actually could. What, what I'm thinking is my king maybe is more useful because it can like go over here to f6 and just kind of defend all these pawns. But maybe castling is also good too. So yeah, if, if a rook comes over, which is really what I'm expecting, do I castle or I play king to e7? Gotta watch out, I guess, for the queen stuff happening. Maybe castling is the better move. It's tough. It's a toss up. Okay, so they do bring a rook over, and like I mentioned, king to e7. Just allowing this rook to come over and probably going to run with my king to f6, where it's kind of defended by these guys. Okay, this illustrates why I went to e7 and not f7. Because here, I have the option to trade and immediately bring my rook over. Imagine if my king was on f7. I wouldn't be able to get control of that file again. That's why I kept it close to the rook. I'm glad that happened so you could see that in action. And yes, I have to watch out for this diagonal, but I checked it and the queen couldn't go there. And, and this was important, right? This was an important feature of the position. So, All right, so do we want to force a queen trade? Takes, take, yeah, I think we do. And here's why. My king is in a good position to stop white's pass pawn. I can very easily come over here. White's king is going to be harder to stop these guys, right? Yes, it can still do it, but it looks like a longer path to me, which is going to give me more options. Okay, they don't even go for that. I think I will go ahead and on passant that, getting ready to force the queen trade. The other thing about this that I like better is there's one pawn that I have to stop. Black has to stop three against one over here. So essentially, I'm going to have two pass pawns. So yeah, because of that, I'm, I'm fairly certain, yeah, we can just take this and then we start pushing and there's a box and I get into the box. Yes, I can. So I'm okay. And so start pushing over here. Okay. Now I have to go, uh, stop this guy. So let's go ahead and 
you're going to see what I'm talking about here. White's going to have a hard time stopping my pawns over here. Let's go check. Let's take that. Let's go ahead and blockade this guy. Don't want to let that sneak by. And so I am going to go and stop it. And start pushing here. So let's actually think through this carefully because I could throw this game very easily if I'm not careful. So here takes, here, king goes, here, takes, there, king, there. Hmm, interesting. So maybe I need to push this way and set up the pass pawns like that. So that the king can't take them. Yeah, so let's do it this way. So I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Go ahead and take this one. Push this. King's going to have to go back and get it. Okay, why well, didn't do it? They needed to go here. And then I was going to leave that. Bring my king over to stop this guy. Ah, but white might have had a4, actually. Yeah, I think I, I probably threw that game if if white um if white would have played that differently. I probably threw that and, and actually could have could have been a draw. Luckily for me, um black didn't see that and let me get the queen. But we'll go and analyze that briefly after this game. Okay, so they go back, but they don't defend this. So now I can capture, and I believe I want to take with the knight. And it's going to put the king in check and force the king to one of these white squares, which is on the same diagonal as my queen, which means I get a free move, essentially, with my knight. It's called a discovered check. You move one piece, which unleashes another piece and puts the king in check. Okay, so where do I want to move to? I have two things to think about here. One is I can move here with the idea that after the king moves, I have checkmate. The other is I can move here with the idea that after the king moves, I take the rook. Now, obviously checkmate is better. The only thing is white doesn't have to move the king. They could play f3, which blocks my queen. And I would no longer have a checkmate. So this kind of guarantees, even if f3 happens, I would still be able to take the rook. So I think this is probably the better move. Let me just verify if I have any tricks after the move f3. So let's say I go here f3 to bring my bishop out don't really see a way to to get a checkmate so with that in mind i think i will go ahead and, and go for the sure thing now my opponent probably wasn't going to see that but here's an example of where you don't really want to play hope chess hope chess is like i hope they don't see it let me go for the checkmate and maybe i'll get lucky no i'm going to just go for the the sure thing what i believe to be the best move and you want to get in the habit of always playing that way, okay? Because one day you're going to be playing against a stronger opponent who's going to see the best move, right? So let's think through this. This is a tricky position. This is a tricky position. There's a lot happening because we have the pin. There's also the knight over here. And potentially the queen might at some point kind of come over. So you do want to be careful. Uh, basically, I'm going to start... When you're in a position like this, you want to come up with a list of candidate moves. So potential options that you might play. So one of them could be h3. Like, do I want to chase this bishop away and force it to either trade or go backwards or something? So I'm going to think about h3. What's another potential candidate move? Maybe capturing this pawn with my pawn. I don't think that's a very good one because then it brings a knight in and I have to worry about this. But maybe it's an option because it does open up my rook. So I might want to consider that briefly. Maybe pushing d5 because I just want to close up the center for whatever reason. I'm just kind of giving you guys options here. Maybe I want to play knight to g5 to unleash my knight and bishop and attack this pawn. It seems like a pretty easy threat for my opponent to deal with. They can just play h6, and I don't think I really love my position, so I don't think I'm going to do that. But I'm just kind of showing you guys what my, you know, how, what it might look like coming up with these candidate moves. So I think h3 makes sense. I do want to be careful. What happens if black decides to sacrifice? I'm not super concerned. I think we would just take it and we have enough pieces in, to defend. Black doesn't really have a lot to follow that up with. So with all that in mind, I'll play the move h3. And 
we can start thinking about this move because of the pin. Doesn't quite work just yet because the knight's defending the queen, but it's definitely something I'm going to keep an eye on. And really, the, the immediate threat is probably just to take the pawn, and then the knight no longer has support, and we would simply take it. We're also attacking this, which um, I'd have to be careful taking that, because then Black's Rook would be lined up on my queen. But these are the things that I'm kind of just familiarizing myself with as I wait for my opponent to make a move, so that once they move, I kind of already have some ideas in the back of my mind of like, all right, I might want to play this, I might want to play this, I might want to play that, right? It's good, uh, it's good time management to think about general ideas and concepts on your opponent's time. And then when it's your turn, you start thinking about concrete, specific moves. Like, I'm going to go here, they're going to go here, I'm going to, you know, things like that. So, maybe we'll play the Ponziani this time, just, just for something new. Never mind. Ponziani is if they play knight c6, you could play c3. So, we've seen this before, and... Uh, Maybe not in this order, but the question that I've mentioned to you guys is you want to ask, are there any tactics available along this diagonal? So the first move that jumps to my head is, can I take this pawn? And after they take, can I go queen h5 check? And I think the answer is yes, because after g6, we have this kind of common idea here of forking these guys. And of course, if the king moves up, well, I'm very happy about that. So already we see the dangers of moving your f pawn. Black could have easily defended it with this pawn, it would have been a much better option. This one you have to be careful. And so here we go. Queen's coming over. And black only has two moves, and both of them are not good, right? This one falls for the fork. So we're gonna win, we're gonna win black's rook right off the bat. Bishop d3. So, you know, I see what white's trying to do, defend the pawn. The problem is they block their d pawn. Their bishop is now stuck which is not a good thing. So I'm in no hurry, actually, to trade this off and free up White's position for them. Actually, I'm going to push by. I'm going to leave it locked up because look how cramped White's position is going to be because of this move. I don't want to let some craziness happen here, so let's finish developing, block off the diagonal. Rooks are ready to go, and now you can see just how solid our position is. And sometimes that happens, like when you when you win a piece in the opening, sometimes you actually have to spend some time taking it and you fall behind in development. So like if we go back here, I had to spend, you know, a queen move, a pawn move, a pawn move. That's three moves, right? And black was doing a good job of developing. And so we actually found ourselves in an interesting position where we were a little bit behind in development. Black has three pieces out, we only have one out. So you kind of have this phase of the game where it's like, okay, we got the piece. Now we need to sort of defend for a little bit and kind of consolidate the weaknesses. And that's what we were doing over these next couple of moves. We snuck in a bishop move. We snuck in castling. And then we snuck in these moves to kind of solidify our pawn structure. We traded. And finally, here we are, you know, caught up again where we have all our pieces out and we're castled. And, you know, black, uh, because of what happened earlier, can't castle.